Today, guys, we're going to look at Lecture 13 in the Causes of the American Revolution series. Uh, today's lecture is called Britain Runs Aground, Burning the Gas Bay, 1772. I've titled that um, this lecture, Britain Runs Aground, because the burning of the gas bay is an event in our narrative where we actually see um, the British uh, literally, um, in the form of the ship, the gas bay, actually hit ground uh, in in America. They, their actual ability to exercise power is seized by the Americans and it's, it's captured by the Americans uh, and the British really have no way to defend themselves. They're complete captives by the Americans in the burning of the gas bay. And it's significant because the, this event is, is a very direct and violent um, rebellion or act of resistance by the Americans in the colony of Rhode Island. Uh, so overall, this event is very short and sharp and it, it's over before we know it, uh, but it's, it's reflective and significant um, because it really encapsulates for us or embodies for us uh, what ends up occurring later on in the actual American Revolution, uh, in the actual war itself. Last time we looked at the tea tax uh, in 1772, a moment in our narrative where both the colonists and the British really see eye to eye, and they're both happy with the tax for once. We see that the Americans, uh, the majority of the Americans, don't mind the tea tax because they're not paying the tangent duties. Uh, and the British are really happy because they're still exercising an authority or, or a power over the Americans through taxation. And so it's this, the tea tax is this anomaly in the, in the American Revolution narrative where for once we're not seeing resistance, we're seeing agreement between both parties. Today we're going to look at the burning of the gas bay and we're going to just outline the event of the gas bay. And the reading in your textbook is page 91 to 92 for more information. Now, what was the gas bay? In brief, it was a British customs office, um, officer ship uh, that was used to capture ships that were smuggling British goods. Okay, So as we know, there is a, a real culture in American colonies um, for smuggling British goods into the colonies so they wouldn't have to pay as much tax. And we've seen this time and time and time again. One of our significant figures, John Hancock, is... Uh, well known for this. And the Gas Bay was one of these ships that approached um, American ships that were smuggling in British goods and intervened and, and stopped the Americans from doing so. Now, what occurs in the Gas Bay uh, is re retold by Charles Ripponlet. Pretty much what occurs is the Gas Bay uh, runs aground or gets stuck. Um, just off the coast of Rhode Island. And when Rhode Islanders see this, especially the Sons of Liberty um, group who are based in Rhode Island, when they see this, they take advantage of this and actually go and uh, jump aboard the gas bay and light it um, on fire and burn it to the ground. And Charles Ripponlet says about this, the attack on a ship and an uninformed officer of His Majesty's Navy shocked the British authorities, exciting even the personal attention of the monarch. So King George, at this um, burning of one of his own ships, becomes very aware. The news travels slowly, but the incident seemed to grow in infamy as the weeks went by. In August, Alexander Wedderburn, the Attorney General for Great Britain, pronounced the Gas Bay Affair to be a crime of five times the magnitude of the Stamp Act riots. The Earl of Dartmouth termed it an offence of much deeper dire than piracy, an act of high treason, levying war against the king. So as we can see in these two quotes um, by Charles Ripponlet, we see that the British respond really aggressively against the burning of the gas bay. The fact that Rhode Islanders have uh, um, boarded a British ship and burned this ship down. It's not just the fact that the ship is owned by the king, it's what the ship actually stands for. The ship stands for um, uh, defending the British um, from, 
from the event of smuggling. Uh, the British ship actually intervenes and uh, actually tries to stop crime. And here we're seeing the Sons of Liberty in Rhode Island actually say, no, we want, we want smuggling and we're going to act against this ship that stops us from smuggling goods in because we don't think that we should have to pay tax. Uh, if the gas bay didn't exist, then we wouldn't have to pay tax. And so they're actually going to board this ship and, and destroy it and burn it to the ground. And so that's why, you know, the Stamp Act riots were bad, but the burning of the gas bay could be just as bad or even worse, as um, Alex Wedderburn says. You know, the Stamp Act riots, sure, there was some kind of, there was a reason for the riots, but the burning of the gas bay, there really wasn't any reason except for pure rebellion, pure war against the king, as Dartmouth says. You know, the, the Rhode Islander Sons of Liberty movement just purely wanted to make a statement that they were going to not accept um, the monarchy. They were not going to accept the, the tea tax, that they certainly were not going to they certainly were not going to be subjected to any kind of uh, rule except for their own rule. And so th this is why the burning of the gas bay is significant, it's because it's a direct response to the king. It's, it's a direct response to Great Britain. It's a direct rebellion against Great Britain and the king. And this actual rebellion is physicalized. It's not just in words. It's actually taking a a possession of the kings and burning it to the ground. And so the burning of the gas bay is caused by the actual ship running aground in Rhode Island. The triggers are things like the Townshend Act, the Sons of Liberty, John Hancock, and the Boston Massacre. You know, each of these triggers represents something. The Townshend Acts represent uh, the ongoing um, taxation on American colonists. And even though these don't exist anymore, they still are uh, in. Um, the conscious mind of the Americans. The Sons of Liberty movement acting always in rebellion against any kind of form of taxation. Uh, we've seen tiring feathering, we've seen the Stamp Act riots, and now we're seeing them actually burn a piece of property to the ground that belongs to the British Navy. Uh, another trigger is John Hancock, the, the actual American radical who is a long-time smuggler and is one of the people who really inspires the Sons of Liberty to stand up against the British. And the Boston Massacre, um, this, this act of violence between both the Americans and the British and the Americans coming off second best, being killed in the process. Uh, and so the Rhode Islanders really see this, all these things um, as triggers to going and actually destroying the gas bay. But what are the consequences of this? Well, the British Navy are one ship down, so that's a logistical matter. But King George is severely displeased with the colonies, and there's this question of treason of the American colonists, uh, which, you know, before this, the, the British have, have in some way been able to justify the actions of the Americans, mainly through the idea of natural rights. But in this case, there's no real natural right uh, justification. You know, the Sons of Liberty movement can stand up against... Uh, or stand up for their natural rights in many other ways, but now they're actually destroying the property of King George. And so this would um, beg the question, you know, is this an act of treason? And finally, um, it's the consequence of this is it provides reason for tightening of British rule over the colonists, as we'll see um, in the lead up to the Boston Tea Party. And that's the burning of the gas bay. Next time we're going to talk about the Boston Tea Party specifically. And we're going to look at another key knowledge area called the Committees of Correspondence. If you've got any questions, please post them in the Google Classroom or see me in class and we can discuss them in person.